All right, so just shooting a quick uh, video of my cart that I got together, my stack cart. Uh, still have some things to do to it. Um, still need to uh, screw in the carriage bolts after I drill some holes there to uh, stiffen up the uprights. And I need to figure out exactly how high uh, and where, which side I want to put the uh, spray can caddies on the side. Uh, so what it is is two five-door carts. Uh, it's very new, not new to the internet. Everyone's done this. But I took two five-drawer uh, Series 2 carts and I cut the top off of one and made a stack uh, by using both sets of risers. Um, the reason why I did it this way is I watched a lot of different videos and I noticed that there are so many different ways that people are making these things. But for me, I did it for two reasons. One, it allows the cart to stay symmetrical. So all the reveals here are even and, and they look normal. Uh, and, and the second reason is it allows me to to put the supports in. So these are the actual weight supports here and here to hold the weight of both carts. I've seen a lot of guys' carts uh, that get made and they're not putting in the supports for whatever reason, either up here or under here sometimes. I see the bottom of these trays hacked out. Um, that just wasn't gonna work for me just because I knew I was gonna really fill this thing up with a fair amount of weight. And I just didn't want to take the chance that the uh, Harbor Freight toolbox was going to buckle. Uh, this is these are the first carts I've had uh, from them. I do have their Series Tool, uh, Series Two toolboxes there, as well as my Snap-on box. But um, this cart was just really so I didn't have to get up and go over to the wall where all my toolboxes are. I could just put this thing right next to me where I'm working on a car, or a motorcycle, and and get to everything. So. Um, Without further rambling, I will get to the actual cart. So we've got a bunch of magnet holders you'll see in a second. They're just drilled through with carriage uh, bolts on the top. And she opens up just fine. So uh, I'm not a professional mechanic any longer. That's a long time ago. So uh, I am. this is just in my home garage. So I have some very nice tools and I have some cheaper throwaway tools that I really don't care about because if it breaks, it breaks. Um, I have duplicates of stuff. This is just, um, you know, 25, 30 years of, of collecting stuff. And this is what's made it into this cart. So I've got all my metric wrenches here on the left, metric allens. Uh, I've got some Torx, uh, some collar wrenches for die grinders and cutoff wheels. Um, I got e-torx sitting up there, uh, standard wrenches, standard allen wrenches uh and then we have down here on the cart itself some magnet holders some e-torques in the back uh harbor freights uh standard socket organizer in the back with a variety of craftsmen and husky and other brands of sockets in there some spark plug wrenches uh same on the front of the metric side we have a bunch of deep craftsmen uh some cheap walmart stuff stanley stuff we have some husky stuff in here um we have God knows what these are. Some of them are craftsmen, some aren't. It's whenever I needed that odd size that I already didn't own in a kit. Um, those were there. This is a, an old Christmas joke that my mom gave me, you know, 30 years ago when these things first became uh, on on TV. And uh, I keep it in there because, believe it or not, it actually has, has worked at some times when other wrenches failed. But overall, it's just a piece of junk. So uh, this is like random 10 millimeter stuff that I find so um, or I buy. So it's kind of like, well, you know, rather than lose the 10s out of here, I just kind of keep a, a random 10. And I think there's a 12 or 14 swivel on there. Um, I got a bunch of extensions that I haven't really kind of figured out yet what I'm going to do with. Um, these are really nice. Uh, these, these are spark plug, uh, socket extensions. These are great if you own a Toyota Tacoma or any Toyota with a, uh, 3.5 liter V6. Those are a must for changing the spark plugs. Uh, some breaker bars here, uh, little wonder bars, a bunch of adapter sizes, uh, some bolt extractors, a bunch of, uh, battery terminal cleaners. Cause you lose one, then you buy one, then you find the one you lost and you eventually lose both of them. Then you buy a third and fourth and so on. Some grabber tools in the back, a little spring loaded guys, a tape measure, some adjustable, uh, pry bars here, um, on the side. I don't really have a lot of screwdrivers in here. I have my favorite old school number two, uh, Phillips from snap on. And then this piece of crap I bought for nine bucks. It's just another number two, but 
it actually tends to not strip almost every Phillips I put it in, which is great. Uh, set of keys that came with the box. Uh, another Wonder Bar, some other adjustable Wonder Bars, breaker bars, uh, 3 8 half inch uh, down the side. So um, you can see they're all hanging down there. Uh, if we swing around to this side, you'll see um, we have a bunch of pry bars, uh, some Craftsman, some Harbor Freight, Pittsburgh. There's a, an old Matco or Snap-on in there. Big junk screwdriver that I don't care about that I could beat up. So uh, that works for that. Going through here, um, start at the top, your, your basic run-of-the-mill socket stuff, some Tecton, Husky, gear wrench stuff, some nice gear wrench finger sockets, some stubbies. Those work nice, so they're all quarter inch through uh, half inch. Um, got some metric flare nut wrenches, because you never know when you need those for brake lines, whatever. Uh, brake reset tool that's probably like 99 cents. That thing could probably either stay there or go in the brake tool, but we'll just take it out of there for now. There's some, uh, so Honda, these are both Honda Shadow uh, <laughs> spark plug wrenches for uh, Honda motorcycles. They're very thin walled. Uh, so you have to turn them down. I turn this one down like crap with a grinder. Uh, this, I think, is the actual tool, if I remember correctly, that I found on eBay years ago. Some uh, old gear wrenches. Before many of you knew what gear wrench was, I would live in Maryland, and gear wrench is actually based here. Um, but I bought these off of a Snap-on dealer years ago, probably 1999 I bought those. So those are 25-year-old gear wrenches. Uh, every single one of them still works. They have actually been used plenty when I was working on cars for a living. And they're still perfect. So on to the other drawer. Uh, this is most of the hand tool stuff. I got a Bosch Impact, uh, Aircat. These are both half-inch guns. I got a Bostitch half-inch gun. Seems to work pretty good. Die grinder, 90-degree die grinder cutter, whatever you want to call it. Um, uh, AC Delco 3.8 ratchet just because I thought I'd give it a try. It was on sale one day. It's been okay for, you know, saving your wrists and your elbows and your shoulders when you want to undo a bunch of bolts, but it's 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 no torque breaker. You know, it doesn't break anything major. So, uh, plier drawer, which I just finished setting up. Not sure if I'll keep it this way, but uh, a bunch of stuff, needle nose, um, channel locks, slide locks, hose, you know, hose clamp pliers. Um, all the major pliers that you can think of, lineman pliers, side cutters, flush cutters, cable cutters, 4 aught and bigger cable cutters, 90 degree uh, needle nose, um, you know, everything's in here, some wire strippers. Um, basically, uh, by trade, I got into electrical and uh, low voltage, so um, I have even more pliers than this. This is just the stuff that kind of gets greasy and dirty from... Uh, working on vehicles and, and around the house and stuff. But uh, bottom door here, we have all the impact stuff. Um, half inch impact sockets, 11 through 32, Tecton set, Tecton lug nut socket set. It's not a, not a bad little kit. I think I paid like 15 to 20 bucks for this thing. And it's got, you know, three two-way sockets and extension of, you know, I've had pretty good luck with it. It doesn't round off or anything. Uh, Stanley, believe it or not, these are Stanley half inch drive. I got them because they're 10 through 24 and I don't think they skip many sizes. Uh, maybe the 23 it skips, but it, this has been a pretty awesome set. I was skeptical when I bought it, but it was, uh, it's been, been through hell. I've done a lot with it and it's still holding together. Um, 10 to 19, three eighths drive craftsman's that I bought years ago, probably 20 some years ago. The first impact wrench, they're still going. Um, this clutch or Amazon special half-inch drive swivel sockets. Again, I'm not a professional, but I have those. They they bailed me out. Um, they don't have the best range of motion like a nicer set from Matco or Snap-on would have. Uh, but they, you know, they give you just enough to where if you can't get to, you know, a 19, it's on the back of a of a knuckle, and you need to put that in there. It gets in there. I mean, I I, I wouldn't have been able to get the wheel hubs off of my Toyota with that without these. I'll put it to you like that. Uh, half-inch drive. Uh, I think I got these off. Amazon 2. These are just standard um, half inch drive deep sockets for SAE. Don't use as much. And then some 30, 35, 36 uh, axle nut sockets. Bunch of adapters. These are some cheap, crappy SAE sockets I keep on the side. 
uh, a couple swivel adapters, and then we have uh, like a five inch wrench extension, whatever that is that comes in handy every once in a while. So that takes care of the impact stuff. Uh, moving on to the lower box, got some brushes, cheap scan tool, um, gasket scraper, uh, you know, fluid pump that I use for changing gear oil, diff oil, things like that. Uh, and then this is like the brake drawer where this guy's new home can be for now. Uh, you know, pad compressor or caliper compressor rather is a couple random old blue point that I've used for 20 some odd years. Adjustable filter wrench, oil filter wrench, some random brake tools, spring compressors, impact drivers for taking rotors off. Brake hooks, you know, I don't know why you guys are too cheap to spend nine bucks on like four or six brake hooks, but you know, if you just let your calipers hang, be that guy, I guess. Uh, hammer drawer, two and a half, one and a half, uh, dead blows, you know, little ball peen, that thing's fun and handy. Uh, you know, rubber mallet, um, two air hammers from CP. They're, they're nothing special, but I got a bunch of long and ch chisel bits for them just in case. Um, went through those drawers. Uh, bottom second to last drawer here. Um, ball joint, uh, remover, uh, spring compressors, we'll pickle fork back here. Um, this thing's actually an old impact socket wrench believe it or not this is when i used to work on air cold vw's this fits the uh rear axle nuts i believe and maybe the fronts too on certain model old bugs uh but basically you put it on there and you can whack the side of it with a hammer which you see i used to do and it'll knock your uh your axle nut free and then you can actually use a half inch drive socket or whatever to, to bring it home but kind of a cool tool so i've kept it around uh, some C-clamps, uh, I got three-eighths, half-inch, and uh, three-quarter-inch uh, torque wrench that goes up to, I think, 250 or 300 pounds. Um, yeah, I know these are Pittsburgh, they're shit, whatever. Uh, I will say that I've actually tested them up against some of friends that have had, you know, two, three hundred dollar uh, snap-on wrenches and nicer, even nicer crashing wrenches. And these have all been, with, been within a pound or two. I don't, I don't build race cars, so, you know. A pound or two off is not going to kill me. Um, so they're just there for, for peace of mind. It's probably torquing them closer to half of what you guys torque stuff to. Uh, bottom drawer, haven't really unboxed all these, but 32-piece master set for SE metric hex. So all Allen uh, heads. I have some 3H drive crowfoot uh, metric size wrenches down here. Uh, some 3 8 inch uh, long hexes. I usually use these on my motorcycle because a lot of stuff on there is high drive, hex drive, whatever you want to call it. Um, this set of Huskies uh, is probably 30 years old. Grandfather of mine bought that for me and I've just kept it all in one piece ever since I was 15 or 16 years old. Uh, so I will always keep that around in my toolbox and uh, just a nice reminder that, you know, he's the one that kind of got me started in a lot of my automotive stuff with tools. So under that is a bunch of big, big C-clamps uh, I've used for leaf springs and stuff, lifting my truck and, and, and other things that require very, very large C-clamps, but always handy to have those around. And they help keep the bottom of the box weighted, so I thought I'd stick them in there. Uh, this set from Crescent um, might look cheesy to you, but got to say, it's bailed me out of so much stuff. I mean, it's made by Crescent. It's got a nice, like, black chrome gray finish. I've been beating the crap out of this for a couple of years and it still looks decent if you wipe it off, but um, it's fully, a, you know, reversible forward with a socket wrench, but the sockets, um, both standard and metric that come with it are pass-through. So they're really awesome because, you know, if you're doing like rear struts uh, replacements and, and like a hatchback or a sedan or something like that, and it's in a really silly spot and you don't want to dig out crazy deep socket and you don't have room to get in there this thing just goes right over it uh works great on uh stuff in the front too if you're doing uh you know top hats and stuff like that suspension but anytime there's something weird with space and you know your, your wrench gets in a situation where the head of your wrench is creating too much of a of a hole this this thing's got me out it's actually really cool um you know i think i think i spent like 60 bucks on that on a whim and it's just it's really paid itself off. Uh, I'd highly suggest that, you know, if you find yourself hating your wrenches, you give that set a shot. So that's pretty much it. Um, I did fab everything up so that the way I cut everything, the um, the top when it's closed will lock the bottom. So uh, the bottom 
is locked now. So the lock bars are engaged. Um, I mean, that click you're hearing is just because you can pull it out a little bit, but that's all it's coming out. It doesn't come all the way out. So uh, one key, one box. Um, but anyway, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys liked it. And uh, I'd like to hear your comments or suggestions on uh, maybe where I, to put the uh, spray can caddies. And uh, I think I might end up grabbing the white tray for the side to flip up just to have a spot to drop stuff because I know that everybody loves doing that. And it, I think it makes sense to me. But anyway, until next time, thanks.